Continuing in the Biblical Creation series, we now come to the feeble excuses offered by the Christian apologists as to why chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Genesis completely contradict each other. If you remember from the last video, we reviewed how chapter 1 has the order of events as Yahweh creates day and night, then the sky dome, then the plants, then the sun, then the animals, and finally man and woman. Now in chapter 2, Yahweh creates man, then the plants, then the animals, and then woman. So the Christian apologists have to explain why we should believe there are no contradictions in the Bible, and yet there are some pretty glaring contradictions on page 1. The most common apology you'll probably hear is called the six-day elaboration. By this idea, chapter 2 of Genesis is a narrative yarn that elaborates on what happened on day 6 as it was described in chapter 1 when Yahweh creates most of the animals and human beings. Now this apology asks us to gloss over the fact that chapter 1 seems to imply that Yahweh created man and woman at the same time whereas obviously there was a gap between the creation of man and creation of woman in the narrative yarn. Aside from that, there's also the problem that some of the animals, specifically the birds, were created on day five, according to the chapter one account of the creation. One creation day before, creating man and woman. And they were created out of the water. Whereas if we read chapter two, it says that Yahweh creates man, then creates the birds out of the ground. Additionally, there's the problem that Yahweh creates the plants on day three in the first chapter of Genesis. Whereas in the second chapter of Genesis, it specifies that Yahweh had not yet created the plants. Chapter 2, verse 4 of Genesis. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So, chapter 2 specifies that this is an elaboration of the time before plants were created. So if you're going to consider chapter 2 to be an elaboration only of day 6, then that doesn't account for why Yahweh created plants on day 3 and yet had not yet created plants by the time day 6 rolled around. A more interesting apology, in my opinion, is the pre-Adamite apology. Now, by this explanation, Yahweh had two totally separate creations. Over in chapter 1, in the land of chapter 1, Yahweh creates this group of humans here. And then, then Yahweh creates in chapter 2 the Garden of Eden and two other humans. Now, I find this an interesting apology because it answers that age-old question, where did Mrs. Cain come from? Because by this idea, Cain was cast out from the Garden of Eden. Well, actually, they were all cast out from the Garden of Eden. Then they had Cain. And then Cain was cast out from Adam's family, and so he went over to the land of chapter 1 and presumably met his wife over there. All right, well, the problems with this is, in addition to the fact there's the whole contradiction about the plants that still applies to this apology, why did Yahweh not cause the plants to grow in the uh, Garden of Eden place? Because Yahweh caused the plants to grow long before there was a man to till the ground in chapter 1. Why was that particularly a problem in chapter 2? Also, why did Yahweh need to create birds out of the ground in the land of the Garden of Eden? Yahweh had already created birds out of the water. Did the birds not fly over into the Garden of Eden for some reason? And finally, and I think most importantly, why did it not occur to Yahweh to create a female companion for Adam in chapter 2? After all, he had just pulled another creation over here in the land of chapter 1 and created man and woman at the same time. Yet if you read the story in chapter 2, it seems to imply very distinctly that Yahweh created man and needed to create some kind of companion for him and was thinking about that and said, I'll create a bunch of animals. And none of those worked out. And it was only after none of those worked out that said, hmm, maybe I'll create a female companion for Adam. None of that makes any sense if Yahweh already had had some prior experience in creating men and women. So, as you can see, the two most famous apologies that are offered for the contradictions in Genesis fail to resolve these contradictions. Now, in the next video, I'm going to talk about why Genesis cannot be taken as a metaphor.